the national women's attacking midfielder Danelle Tan has become the first Singaporean footballer accepted into a U.S. National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I soccer program. The 18-year-old spoke to The Straits Times from London, where she's studying at Mill Hill School. She's also the first female player to represent Mill Hill's first 11 football team, as the school does not have a women's side. Well, it was certainly my goal to sign um, and to, to um, be able to land a uh, a place in a college and I think one of the things that I really liked about the US college system was the fact that you would get a very good education alongside playing football like you say it's a very prestigious um, institution and so the fact that I didn't have to sort of sacrifice my education made the path very appealing to me um, and so it's, it was always something that I was working hard towards to, to get there. I think just the fact that, you know, the the players here, the speed of play and the physicality here has been a lot higher. So it forces me to think quicker. It forces me to be a lot more aggressive. And day in, day out, when you go to training, when you go to matches every single day and you're forced to play at a high level and compete at your best, it just makes you a better player. You know, you're kept on your toes. There's no space for slacking. There's, there's no day that you can just say, oh, let me just take it easy. I don't feel good today. It's competing every single day and that's driven me to be a better player and I'll, and I'll give you an example when I first came here um, physicality was one of the aspects that I really thought that I, I could improve on and so when I was playing with the boys team at my school you know the the boys were shoving me around I was getting thrown off the ball and I've and since then I've really worked on my on the strength and conditioning aspect with the coaches at my school and just the other day when I played um, a game with the boys I was winning 50 50s I was you know getting stuck in put, getting the ball off boys and that was something that I really saw the improvement on that it was so like stuck the difference wh where when I first joined it was the opposite way around and football aside I think you know just the fact that coming to England living alone Staying in a boarding school with people from all over the world, you know, just in my friend group alone, I have a friend from Italy, from Russia, from India, from China, from Iran. And it's just, you know, the, the this you get to see so many different perspectives, so many different views. And I just think it made me a lot, a lot more mature to understand different viewpoints of the different struggles people were facing. You know, the whole Iranian crisis. I had friends who had family back in Iran and were struggling and it, it was so tough for them to be able to come to come to school here knowing that you know their family was back home struggling and so I think it just widened my perspective of 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 life really um, and it's been something that I'm very fortunate to have the experience of. So now all the guys just treat me as you know one as a player on the team, like there's no difference whether I'm a girl or a guy. And so it, it's quite funny because every every game that we go for, I have to get a separate changing room. So even though, you know, I'm the boys are all in one changing room and I, I, I'm the only girl having to use my own changing room. Um, but it's really, I think it's really nice that boys have all made me feel part of the team. And a lot of the guys, I mean, all of the guys I go to school with on a daily basis. So it's just... You know, it's just, it's just a normal, like, it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. I think for me, I set myself a lot of goals. And then every time I take another goal off that list, it's a, it's a good, it's a good gauge for me to know that I'm progressing in the right direction. Ultimately, the goal is still to play professionally, but every small success that you can sort of tick off is always very gratifying and it always gives me a lot of joy. And so it was a very proud moment for me to be able to um, to be able to get this contract um, and offer from a US, a very, very prestigious US institution. Well, it's to play, it's to play professionally. And, and I guess the sort of step under would be to excel and to, to really be a standout performer in the US college. And th that's sort of the next goal to go in there and really have a, make a really good impact on the program um, and bring it to the next level. 
I've always known that the path I'm treading is is a very unique one, and you know, not many, if if any, have have gone before. Um, and so I'm really glad that I can sort of trailblaze a path for future generations, for all the younger girls out there who are not sure if it's a viable path to be able to play football professionally. Um, and so I've always felt that by charting this path, I'll help them realize that it's possible. It's very possible if they really want it and they really want to, you know, put their head down, get to work, that it's not I think the, the the common misconception is that a lot of girls don't think it's even possible to begin with. So by me, you know, going out and charting this path, I hope that more people can follow in my footsteps and say, "Hey, this is actually something that we can do," um, and 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 ha- get their own journey. It, it's it's always an honor to to represent uh, your country to play for the Singapore national team, um, and so on. My part is just to really help as much as I can, bring my experiences back into Singapore um, to share what I've learned from overseas and be able to raise the game in Singapore to, to another level. You know, the way forward is to go overseas. The level overseas is a lot higher and you're going to be challenged. And to go overseas is not is not going to fall right into your lap. You have to be proactive. You have to, you know, first have a highlight reel, have a CV to make people known about know about you. Because you know, opportunities don't just drop into your lap. Even though people might see that I've you know got a place in a US uh, uh, college, they don't see all the years that I have you know put work in, email coaches, gone out and played in front of these coaches, contacted them. Um, and so I think a lot of times people just sort of expect it to come to them rather than reaching out and actually trying to get the opportunities from themselves, grab it and take it for themselves. And so I definitely encourage anyone to, you know, reach out to people. There are a lot of people out there that are willing to help. I've been very grateful for a lot of people who have helped me out of the kindness of their heart. Um, and so I, I encourage everyone to just, you know, if they really, if that's what they really want to do, reach out, be proactive, and really go for it. You know, even though I'm in England now, my dad constantly stays up um, later so that after my matches, after my trainings, he's there for me to talk to, to speak about, you know, what what went well, what went wrong, what I could have done better. Um, and so they've been a constant support throughout my journey, and I've just been so grateful that I have parents like them.